Hey guys and welcome to another episode of Quick Expert Reviews. Today we've got the Lenovo Tab M10 10.3. However, first of all, big shout out to Tolpit2 for actually putting the device on my radar um, so I can actually buy it and review it. I can't guarantee and promise I will do that with every device you guys mention. Uh, bought this one considering the price, 149 quid for the 2 gig, 32 gig model, which is the one I'm reviewing today or 199 for 64 gig with 4 gigs of RAM. Um, yeah, it was doable. Managed to get it within my budget. So yeah, here we go. Let's crack on with the review. As usual, as you can see, we are unboxing the device to see what's in the box. You actually do still get the charger. <laughs> Hi, Apple. Um, and you do get the Type A to Type C um, cable, so a full-blown USB on one side and then Type-C on the other side. Let's have a look at the actual tab itself. Pretty neat device, I have to admit. It weights in at just over 460 grams, so it's actually not that bad. Um, I did try and get the 4G model, however I'm not sure if they are actually manufacturing a a variant with a SIM card because on the Lenovo page or in UK, at least in UK, um, you can only get them with um, memory card slot. So it starts from 32 gigs and 2 gigs of RAM, 64 gigs and 4 gigs of RAM and then 128 gigs with 4 gigs of RAM as well. So that's that. On the bottom, we've got, as you've seen, the memory card tray, the power button volume or down volume up. Then we've got the headphone jack on the very top and one of the speakers. Then on the bottom, we've got the dock and on the docking port. And on the other side, we've got the second speaker and the Type-C charging port. Now, it is the, the, the bottom dock mount. It's only for a... Um, a special cable that turns it into like a, a smart frame, like the um, smart display it's called. Um, so I believe if you get it from Amazon, it's 229 for the 64 gig model and you get the um, like a kind of dock with it as well. Um, and it's a 64 with 4 gigs of RAM. This one was 149 with 2 gigs and 32 gigabytes of internal storage. However, you can expand it with a memory card. The safe spot is 400 gigs with this one. Not sure if one terabyte SIM card will fit. I don't have a one terabyte SIM card, unfortunately. Um, so I'm not gonna go through every single option, um, but there are some unique features um, that are available only on the Lenovo tab, like the focus mode, for example, uh, so you add a specific app, let's say gaming, and then you won't get notifications while you are gaming. Um, so it's not do not disturb across the board, but only within those certain apps. When it comes to sound, you've got Dolby Atmos as well, uh, plus a custom option with it as well. So if you'd like to, you can adjust it to your liking. There is also a separate shortcut on the home screen, which is called Dolby Atmos. Um, obviously it works with the speakers, as you can see the shortcut over there, uh, or over the headphones themselves. When it comes to display, there is actually quite a lot of going on in here. So obviously, as, we, as usual with most of the Android devices, we've got the eye protection mode or blue light filter or um, however other companies call it. You can obviously readjust the home layout as well. So for example, you can have it as like an iPad. So everything is on the main screen. There is no app drawer. Um, and if you scroll from the bottom, if you swipe from the bottom, then you'll get um, the search function. Or you can have it like a box standard Android device where you actually swipe from the bottom and then you've got the, um, the access to all the apps. So it's like an app drawer. Then another cool feature is obviously the navigation bar. So you've got the classic mode, the productivity mode, and then you've got the gesture mode which is all too familiar with anyone running an Android uh, with at least version 9. 
Now the productivity mode, I will show you later on when I'm going to fire up um, Word and so on and when I'm going to connect Bluetooth keyboard because that's where it's um, most useful. We've got double tap to wake as well and then we've got the face recognition which kind of works. <laughs> Just want to show you how fast it is to unlock the device. It's not the fastest but it does a pretty decent job as you've seen. Um, so it's nice to have it and it's nice that it works in landscape mode as well because sometimes uh, like for example with iPhones they only work in portrait mode. With iPads, they work both in portrait and landscape. It's nice that 149 device works in both. Device theme, you can change it to dark, but as you can see, not much. Uh, not not It doesn't change that much. Um, so it's a bit of a weird one. But yeah, that's that. Obviously, you've got Bluetooth, you've got Wi-Fi. Um, there is no GPS and there is no NFC. However, I'm not sure if you're going to use it for any payments. There is special what's called a kids mode um, so if you'd like to you can lock the device behind the pin code and then you've got a couple of cool things so you've got like a coloring book for the little ones if you'd like to um, you can use it like that or you can um, for example color it manually. Let's delete that and then another thing, oh, that's not very responsive, is it? You've got a couple of more things that you can color if you'd like to, like, I don't know, a boss or something. And then you've got a thing called Monster Class as well, which tries and puts most of YouTube videos and songs into one place that are safe for the kids. And if your kiddo wants to leave the tab, they, well, the app, they can't, you have to type in the, uh, the parental code to leave the app. Um, so that's that. Not many additional apps from Lenovo, pretty much clean Android um, OS, so not much from Lenovo itself, which is most of the time nice, especially when you do, you've got only two gigs of RAM, uh, because obviously the heavier the UI the, 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 the more strain it puts on the actual hardware. Camera, if you're ever going to use it, it is actually uh, pretty feature rich, as you can see, especially when it comes to manual mode. Manual mode only works on pictures, though it doesn't work on videos. Um, so that's that. And listen to the audio quality on those two speakers. And then we've got another unique feature, which is this menu that slides from the right, which allows us to, for example, capture screenshots. Um, you can put the blue light filter on as well. So if you're watching in the evening, it doesn't only work on movies. It works like in gaming or wh wherever you use it. Uh, it's quite useful. So you don't have to press, for example, power up and down. Um, to capture a screenshot. And then I'm going to connect my beloved Zag Key Cover, Zag Keys Cover keyboard. Unfortunately, it's been discontinued. It's been manufactured in 2014. You might get it on eBay used or something like that. I've been using it since iPad Air, the very first one. It is actually made for iPad Air, but I've been using it with most of, of my tablets. Um, since then, let's just adjust the camera a bit. Uh, pretty decent keyboard, obviously uh, backlit as you can see as well. I charge it probably once a year because it's got a built-in uh, battery via micro USB. 
A lot of people ask me about that keyboard, so I thought I'm gonna mention a bit more about it. Yes, you can fold it like a laptop if you'd like to. Um, you can power it on, power it off. It also switches off automatically. Uh, you can even change the color of the backlight. And now that is the productive mode. So as you can see on the bottom, the um, back arrows and multitasking go to the left and then you've got most recent apps mostly used on the very bottom. So it's not Samsung DeX, but it works quite well. As you can see, I still got access to the most uh, commonly used apps on the bottom. Obviously, as it is an Android device, it works with the Microsoft Office package, with the Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, um, Microsoft Excel as well, which I use personally uh, for all my eBay shenanigans. Um, so, yeah, works pretty well. It is a full-blown Word, so if you've got OneDrive, you can obviously sync it. As it is an Android and not an iPhone or an iPad, you've got full access to your uh, internal storage as well for all your documents. So it makes for a pretty decent device when it comes to um, working. And obviously, if you'd like to, you can connect a Bluetooth mouse as well. And an Xbox One or PS4 or any Bluetooth controller. So now we're moving to gaming. Um, I am playing Minecraft, as you can see. Again, a lot of people ask about the settings. So moving on from now, every single time I'm going to test Minecraft on any of the Android devices, I'm going to show you which video settings I'm using. Now, the game does kind of run all right-ish uh, with the fancy clouds and everything. However... Not sure if it's the case of the RAM or the actual MediaTek Helio P22T tab. Well, um, the CPU on the tab itself. Um, it is an octa-core CPU. However, like I did mention, it does kind of, as you can see, stutter um, a bit. So obviously, if you'd like to, you can downgrade the graphical options. Um, so yeah, it's definitely... The CPU with the GPU that's struggling in here. So yeah, let's switch off render clouds and actually let's switch off everything, smooth lighting, fancy graphics and see how that's going to look like. Yep, miles better. What's funny though is that obviously Minecraft is quite a CPU heavy game, uh, but I'm going to play Call of Duty Mobile in a second and actually it plays really well. Um, so, yeah, let's crack on with Call of Duty. Enemy you can see it performs quite well. Remarkable. I do prefer touch controls over uh, the actual controller, as you can see. Well done, me. Um, but it's nice that you can actually use a controller. I hope it pairs you with other people that use controller as well, because <laughs> otherwise might not be the greatest, but there are some people that play these games, PUBG Mobile and Call of Duty Mobile with 10 fingers. Um, so, yeah. Might not be as advanced when it comes to gaming on a top screen. I do believe the very, very first couple of maps are played with bots anyway, so no, I'm not that good. <laughs> Wish, but maybe not. Okay, let's have a look. Right, and then the, the major question that was asked is how does Project X Cloud, or actually it's called Game Pass for Android now, so they moved out of the beta. Well, it still says beta on the bottom. Um, however, in order to run the Project X Cloud or Game Pass for Android, you have to download a Game Pass app now not the Project xCloud one, because when you download Project xCloud, it actually asks you to download the Game Pass app. Now, when it comes to performance, I am sitting two rooms away from the router, um, and I only have 50 meg broadband with 10 meg upload. So I believe when I did the tests recently, it uh, shows around 40 megs. Um, 40 megabits per second download. So it's not the greatest. 
as you can see I am using the foam stick and there is a bit of a lag between what's happening on the screen and the foam stick but it is actually playable and I did choose uh, a faster paced games like Forza Horizon 4 and I'm gonna play Doom Eternal in a second as well um, because obviously it doesn't matter that much when you're playing I don't know a role-playing game or um, a turn-based game but if it's a fast-paced game like a racing game the actual input and the lag between the the what's happening on the screen and the controller is quite important um, so yeah let's fire up Doom Eternal which is the latest addition after acquiring Bethesda by Microsoft 7.5 billion dollars did they pay or something like that but obviously we've got Doom Eternal now on Game Pass and we also get the other uh, games like Dishonored which is brilliant in my opinion so yeah Doom Eternal plays things slightly better than the Forza Horizon which wouldn't surprise me considering that Sometimes Microsoft stuff doesn't work on Microsoft devices. Oh yeah, I have to finish him. So let's have a look. Kids, close your eyes. Yay! That's pretty fun. I did play Doom Eternal on the Bethesda launcher on my PC and I've actually managed to get a bit far away of it. I'm not a big fan of the platforming sections in Eternal. Ooh, baby. Oh yeah, that's that. Thanks for watching another episode of Quick Expert Reviews and I'll speak to you soon guys. Happy Halloween. Take care. Bye.